Thank you for joining me here this evening um, and for attending this really interesting event. And there's so much going on upstairs. And I'm um, delighted to have you all here and um, to realize that you all come to talk about, to, to hear me talk about um, earthquakes and literature and disasters and fiction, um, which is one of my favorite topics, but I didn't quite realize it would be so popular on a Friday night. So really pleased to have you all here. Um, so today's talk is titled 311, 10 Years On, Reflections from Tohoku. Um, and I'll explain um, further about um, what 311 means, but it is something that um, has come to be um, used as a, as a way of referring to March 11th, 2011 um, in common parlance. So over 10 years have elapsed since the Great East Earthquake Japan, sorry, Great East Japan Earthquake Disaster of March 11th, 2011. And memories of the catastrophe still constitute part of the fabric of daily life in the affected areas. The disaster, often referred to as 311, consisted of a 9.1 magnitude earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear meltdowns at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. They exacted a tremendous toll on Tohoku, the northeast region of Japan. Nearly 16,000 people died, with roughly 2,600 still missing. Of those numbers, there were close to 5,000 dead and over 1,600 missing in Iwate Prefecture alone. In cities and towns along the coastline, the earthquake and tsunami wreaked havoc on the physical landscape with vast areas of land either effectively erased or dramatically altered. In places like the seaside town of Otsujicho, sandy beaches along the coastline virtually disappeared. In others, the ground literally shifted position, changing the elevation and topical features of the land. Even those who did not experience the disaster firsthand were impacted in some way by the events of 311. Powerful visual footage of the disaster was relayed continuously in the media, drawing the nation, and indeed the world, into the shocking spectacle. And the continuing effects of the disaster in Japan were far-reaching. Devastated towns, displaced residents, widespread anxiety over radioactive contamination, environmental pollution, the challenges of reconstruction, or the impossibility of reconstruction in many cases, and ever-growing concerns over the dangers associated with nuclear power. Many of these concerns persist even today, and there are those, such as the noted author Furukawa Hideo, who have argued that the moniker 311 is not appropriate, as it refers to a singular date, March 11, 2011, and the impact of the disaster is ongoing. So where are we 10 years on? How do we remember the disaster of 311? And what is the role of literature in that process? The landscape of the Tohoku region is dotted with memorials commemorating the loss of lives, livelihoods, and infrastructures. And the term Foucault, recovery or reconstruction, has been thoroughly embedded in the, into the mindset of the locals. One example of this is the purpose-built stadium completed in 2019 to host the Rugby World Cup, the Kamaishi Unosumai Memorial Stadium. Although you'll notice in Japanese, it is Kamaishi Unosumai Fuko Stadium, and that Fuko refers to recovery reconstruction. It was constructed on a site formerly occupied by two schools um, located in the Iwate town of Kamaishi, which suffered large numbers of casualties and sustained considerable damage on 311. When the disaster struck, all 600 students who attended the schools that day survived by escaping to higher ground an incident that is referred to as the miracle of Kamaishi. Set against the backdrop of the rugged mountain landscape where students and staff took refuge on 311, numerous aspects of the stadium's design and construction evoke the character of the region. The stadium features a brightly colored mural constructed by disaster survivors, including children, constructed with the support of artists, the mural depicts elements of the cultural and historical landscape that are central to the identity of the town and its surrounding regions. So you can see some of them there um, in the mural, um, but I've sort of drawn some of them out there for you. So you can see the steel mill, rugby, fishing, umineko, the black-tailed seagulls that are particular to the coastal regions, and the Kamaishi Daikanon statue, which is a famous local landmark. So if you just go back there, you can see how they're all reflected so they've put all of these aspects of the local landscape. Um, it's a city that is basically, um, its whole livelihood is around um, fishing and steel. And they're famous for their rugby team, which is called the, what is it, the Sea Waves, Kamaishi Sea Waves. 
Parts of the stadium were built from wood taken from cedar trees lost in a forest fire in nearby Ozaki Peninsula in 2017. According to the station, stadium's official website, the canopy above the viewing, sorry, sorry, the canopy above the main viewing stand was designed to, to resemble symbols of hope. That goes this one here. There you go. So you can see the wingspan of a bird taking flight. If you look at the, the sort of shape of the, the stadium um, sort of roof there, it's supposed to resemble the wingspan of a bird taking flight. Um, and then also, if you go back and just, just have a look at the stadium itself, you can see that it's also um, supposed to resemble um, ships. Um, and this is, this is meant to symbolize ships departing on a new voyage. And I have this on the authority of one of the architects who worked on the project. Um, so really, the town is really very proud of their stadium. The stadium logo similarly offers an image of optimism and reflects the town's natural surrounding. So going back to those seats, if I might, there. So these are called um, Kizuna Shito. So there are 600 spectator seats in the front rows of the stands. And these are meant to highlight the support that came from various communities during the 311 disaster. So lots of people from the surrounding areas and surrounding towns all came and pitched in to construct the stadium. And also on the day that I was there um, viewing the stadium, um, which was before the stadium actually opened um, to the public, and according to my children, was the best part of the trip to Japan. Um, we got to go in the locker rooms and the VIP rooms and everything, and nothing had been used yet. So the day that I was there, people from the local community were actually there cleaning it up um, for the Rugby World Cup. So they were there polishing seats um, and sweeping, and it was really just a nice way of um, recognizing how the community all sort of pitched in, and this was a very much a, a sort of local and community effort. So there you go, there's the spirit of reconstruction. In numerous respects, the stadium was deliberately designed to reflect the profound connection between memory, the local landscape, and identity in the region after 311, a bond that became even more pronounced in the years that followed. Attention to the landscape is not only notable as a focal point for the devastation caused by the 311 disaster. As a region, Tohoku has long been defined by its unique location and topographical features, which scholars have argued played a crucial role in shaping its very character. Matsumoto Hiroaki addresses the relationship between the history and topography of the Tohoku region and the mindset of its residents, noting the material conditions such as treacherous winters, and which made survival difficult, in, as well as a history of hardships dating back to ancient times. So these include famine, natural disasters, uprisings, and failed rebellions, and failed rebellions that were put down quite violently. The narrative of Tohoku regional identity has been framed by these complex and varied discourses of struggle, catastrophe, and marginalization. Memorials to the disaster, such as the Kamaishi, Kamaishi Stadium, represent what French historian Pierre Nora referred to as lieu de mémoire, entities that have become symbolically significant to a community's collective memorial heritage. Nora's sites of memory are not limited to physical entities, such as museums, monuments, or commemorative buildings. They include other sites as potential realms of memory. If we consider the Kamaishi Stadium as one site of memory, the inclusion of the term Fuko in the stadium's name is instructive. So the word itself connotes multiple meanings. We can think of reconstruction, restoration, rebuilding, and recovery. In parts of Tohoku affected by the disaster, there are visual reminders of the ongoing nature of the reconstruction effort. The word Fuko can be found imprinted on posters, banners, um, engraved on plaques, and memorial stones. Importantly, in Tohoku, a region with a history of trauma and marginalization, as other, even within Japan, Foucault does not merely consist of the erection of physical structures. 311 prompted a fundamental rethinking of regional identity, one that was under underpinned by its unique historical, cultural, and literary roots. Foucault, therefore, was not only manifested in brick and mortar memorials or structures such as the stadium, it was also carried out through other sites of identity construction including literary texts. So when we think about the meanings associated with Foucault or reconstruction in Japan, this must be read against a nuanced backdrop of contested regional identity. So Tohoku is a region that considers itself to a certain extent to, as having been left behind by history. And so when it articulates its identity post 311, um, it is always thinking of that. That's always hanging there in the background. And 311 had the impact of refocusing discourse on Tohoku and its identity. Just as the region became the object of global attention as a disaster-affected area, writers also sought to represent the voices of the region. Haley Saul has argued that disasters can provide critical moments for the renegotiation of identity. 
She says, disasters present a very powerful and often unpredictable context for the formation and maintenance of collective memories and identities because they are often forged in an atmosphere of existential threat. Indeed, given the lengthy history of trauma and contestation regarding Tohoku identity, the stakes seem particularly high for such opportunities of collective memory and identity formation following 311. So what kind of works of Shin Sai Bungaku or post-disaster literature have been published in the wake of the disaster? Most of the literature has focused, in fact, on Fukushima and the nuclear aspect, but following, I offer a taste of literary works by authors with a relationship to Tohoku or works about the region that have emerged since 2011. Now, I have to apologize because I realized after I did this that they're all in Japanese and um, I was really excited about all the new things that came that have come out and I haven't actually put anything that's in English. Um, so let's move forward. This is one of the first ones. So this is one of the first uh, works I wanted to talk about. And so just as the Kamaishi Stadium has been constructed as a site of memory that is both physical and symbolic, formed by collective understanding and action, so too the anthology from that day forward, or Anohikara, emerges as a powerful site of memory, a space that is both material and symbolic. Michimata's anthology draws on the rich and complex history of the region. The stories in the anthology reveal the tensions that are characteristic of the region, how the natural landscape shaped its identity, the martial and historical losses and defeats, and this sense of being somehow left behind by culture and civilization. These post-disaster stories also chart a series of returns to Iwate, a return to the homeland, and to the literary history of the region via traces of regional texts, such as the legends of Tono, Tono Monogatari, and the fiction of Miyazawa Kenji, who's a, a poet but also children, a writer of children's stories. Both of these have been the topic of increased attention after the catastrophe of 311. Importantly, this anthology was designed around the theme of Iwate and disaster, and so he actually commissioned it specifically for that purpose. So he got in touch with local writers, people who had a, a connection um, to Iwate, and he asked them to write about the disaster specifically. And so this is an example of the ways in which uh, this, this narrative of Iwate post-311 is being written and rewritten, often with respect to its history and to its landscape. Another example is um, Wakatake Chisako's Ora Ora, Ora Ora de Hitori Igumo. So this is, um, I, I guess, I go alone. So Wakatake's novel won the Octagawa Prize in 2017. Um, she's a native of Tono in Iwate Prefecture, which is the city at the heart of Yanagida Kunio's famous record of legends and traditions, The Tales of Tono. Wakatake was 63 years old when she won the prize, and this is something that was um, much discussed in the news. Um, the novel does not specifically address 311, but interestingly, it employs the regional dialect of the Tohoku region, which is frequently dis regarded as distinctly different from standard Japanese, and many people think it's actually quite difficult to understand. Um, even Japanese will sometimes say it's hard to understand. Through its narrative of a 70-something-year-old widow estranged from her children, it evokes issues such as memory, forgetting, feelings of dislocation from her home in Tohoku, and identity. And another one, and also I, I didn't get a chance to put um, all the images I wanted on the slide, but there's a film that came out about this um, not too long ago. So this is Numata Shunsuke's 80, um, or Behind the Shadows, or be published in 2017. And also, I should note that the previous work here, and this one, as well as the next one, they've all won the Octagawa Prize, which is considered the most prestigious um, prize for um, writers in Japan. And it's often uh, the prize that um, sets your career off. So, Eidi was one of the first novels to directly deal with the topic of 311. The novel depicts the pastoral beauty of the Iwate landscape, with numerous depictions of the flora and fauna characteristic to the region. It also describes the disappearance of a protagonist's friend, someone who's believed to have perished in the 2011 tsunami. The novel raises important questions about loss, the inability to find closure, memory, as well as important social issues such as homosexuality and minority groups in Japan. So this is a really interesting um, addition to the body of works um, that are related to post-311 fiction. And one of the most recent additions to the post-311 literary landscape is Ishizawa Mai's Kai ni tsuzuku basho ni te, or At a Place um, Following the Shellfish or the Shells. Um, so this actually won the Octagawa Prize earlier this year. Interestingly, the narrative is set during COVID pandemic times, but the pandemic itself, COVID itself, doesn't actually make a major appearance in the novel. Rather, it serves as the impetus for the protagonist's reflections about her own memories of the disaster. A friend of the narrator, thought to have perished in the tsunami, makes a sudden appearance in the narrative. 
although it is unclear whether or not the character is really real. The story mingles realism with surrealism and addresses the inability for many to reach closure after the events of 311. So questions of memory with respect to cultural traumas such as 311 are particularly important in light of recent events such as Tokyo 2020, or as it happened, the Tokyo 2021 Olympic Games. In the run-up to the Games, I know it was so disappointing, um, but at the same time, it did happen. Um, in the run-up to the Games, there were profound concerns from those in the disaster-affected regions that they would be left behind um, amidst the excitement of the Olympics and what I think I would call a, a sense of Olympic amnesia, this idea of wanting to forget and to, to highlight what is good and great about a country um, without thinking about what lies in the shadows. So in this respect, literature functions as a kind of counter-narrative to the otherwise natural process of forgetting. Since March 2011, like the memorials that have been erected in the disaster regions to commemorate the disaster and bring about Foucault or reconstruction, literature has played a critical role in the process, molding and shaping an identity for Tohoku moving forward. We can regard this writing as a type of lieu de mémoire, site of memory. But these works of fiction do not serve merely as a repository for memory. Rather, they participate in the ongoing project of the construction of a post-311 Tohoku identity. Thank you. <laughs>